Good evening, Director. And so we have actually arrived at the last prayer session of the year, and and we are spending this this evening as a Thanksgiving and praise and worship because Goliath has been taken down finally. <laughs> And through the year, we God has trained us to combat the lions. But last last time, we actually got to the final phase of meeting Goliath. And as truly the scripture tells, the stone hit the head of Goliath, giant, and the giant fell on his face. So this evening, we are spending spending time properly thanking our God by His Spirit. He can bring what He wants to the scripture, what however He wants to guide us. We will do that. So let's give, have a first short opening prayer and then come continue to the sessions. So Father, thank you for this whole year. Thank you <laughs> that you have taken us from the pastures, those fields with the sheep. You have trained our hands to war and we, you have taken us this far, the final days of this year. And we are going to end the year and enter into the new year's triumphantly, more than conquerors. Thank you, Father, because as we see that this year was so glorious, we also see and can just glimpse, have a more small glimpse for next year that how glorious it shall be. And it's only, all and only to your magnificent name. So in your magnificent name, we give glory and praise. And Father, Abel, also thank you for that. You guide us this evening. We praise you. We glorify your name from the bottom of our hearts. Individually, what scripture ever we are praying for, thanking you for. Father, this is an evening of celebration. We can sing to you in the spirit from our heart. We can dance before you. We can shout for joy because we are happy. We are glad for what you had done for us. And how you have glorified your name. And we know that we shall enter in the glorious year where our Lord, you our God, shall be magnified even more. That many shall come to know you personally, shifted from darkness to light, and to know only through God and the one to whom do you send, that you did send, Jesus Christ, your Son. So, Father, Thank you for all these things, and we give you glory and praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Saku, dear brother, will you be ready to lead us in the first session? Yes. Okay, go ahead. I will read the scripture from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 54 to 57. David took the Philistines' head and brought it to Jerusalem. He put the Philistines' bones in his own tent. As Saul was said, David going out to meet the Philistines, he said to Abner, commander of the army, Abner, whose son is a young man? Abner replied, As sure as you live, your mouth says, I don't know. The king said, Find out whose son this young man is. As soon as David returned from killing the Philistines, Abner took him and brought him before Saul. He David still holding the Philistine said, and now we are praising God and he has created us to praise him and everything that is in his word and this is how we can give back and honor to God and glory to God from what he has given to us and everything belongs to him so he has just given back thanks and given back praise and also we can understand from the story of David that when David had a victory he praised God and Saul also see that and everybody saw that and they gave glory to God and that was how David did every time he had a fight there were many psalms and different situations he gave praise and thanks not only as after the victory, but also in the difficult times and difficult places. And that was how he was blessed. And we will have this prayer point, but it's not just prayer point, but we are praising God by praying. And let's begin to pray and praise God by any kind of way. Yeah, you should do this. Father, we praise you and we thank you. You have defeated the Goliath in our lives. And we give thanks because you did everything. And you gave us a victory in this life. And that's why we praise you. And we celebrate your mercy and you love to God every praise, Father. We sing unto you and we give thanks in every possible way and because you have held us this year, you have brought down those enemies. And every time, everyone can see that you gave this to me. Lord, we give this praise back to you because it belongs to you and we want everybody to see that you made everything great in our life. You really delivered us from the hands of the enemy. You gave us the strength to face an ego light and also you gave us the strength to stand before an ego light and also you gave us the strength to fight till the end and finish, finish any battle. Lord, we thank you. Jesus, name we pray. Jesus, name we pray. Amen. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Everyone, let's be completely free. David asked before Ark of the Covenant, which is full might, even though the princess, his wife, was despising him. My, my, my God, there. But we are dancing before the Lord. We are rejoicing. Show forth your rejoicing, the Lord. It doesn't matter if you have never danced before. Just pour out your gladness to the Lord. That is what we are doing. Is it by dancing? It is what, well, it, whatever way it comes, it just pours out. So, yes, let's go to the next next session and dear sister Agoswa, will you be leading us in the next session yes, please hello all right go ahead oh, praise god for tonight so i read from first samuel chapter 17 verses 54 to 57 first samuel chapter 17 verses 54 to 57 and three uh, it says and david took the head of the philistine and brought it to jerusalem but he put his armor in his tent as soon as saul saw david go out against the philistine he said to abner the commander of the army Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As your soul lives, O king, I don't I do not know. And the king said, Inquire whose son the, the boy is. And as soon as David returned from the striking down of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his in his hand. Amen. And I read Psalm 105. Verses 1 to 6, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wondrous works, glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord, of those who seek the Lord rejoice, seek the Lord in his strength, seek his peace, presence continually, remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered, O oh, offspring of Abraham, his servant, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Praise God. Amen. And, oh, thank God for everything. Thank God. Thank God. Thank in some uh, in the verse one of Psalm 105, it says that make known his deeds among the peoples. And it's just when God has done something for us, we just cannot contain it within us. We just have to share it with other people for them to see the greatness, to see his goodness, for them to also wonder who, who this God is. You know, in, in the first Samuel, after David killed Goliath, he took the giant head and he he he, he was he brought it to Jerusalem. You know, that is just an example of when God has done something so mighty. Just show it to other people. We just announce, we just... For people to also know it, for people to just 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 see what God has done, and we just praise God for 
everything that he has done and and there are so many ways we can we can do this not just by letting others people other no you know in Psalm 105 it says that we give thanks to the Lord we make known his deed we can sing to him we can we can glory in his name our hearts are, are, are meant to rejoice we we have to still continually seek the Lord and remember all that he has done and it's just just let us just praise God and thank God for everything that he has done this past month. I will praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole With my whole I will praise the Lord. Precious people. Praise the Lord. When we praise the Lord, when we praise Jesus, we will praise the Lord with our heart, with our heart. We will praise the Lord, precious people. Praise the Lord. Oh, my brethren, praise the Lord, oh, my sisters, praise the Lord, everybody, praise the Lord, the Lord is good, oh, my brothers, praise the Lord, oh, my sisters, praise the Lord, everybody, praise the Lord, the Lord is good, we 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 That is why 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Mm. Also, if any of you have this, I, I believe many of us have testimonies. Last time, Goliath was defeated. So if it's not just manifested in your life, it's impossible not to manifest. But those why it has already been manifested, which is also in this session. I'm, I'm, I will do the next session probably. Yeah, I will do it next, next, next session. So uh, if you have testimony or as you have testimony, please send a message to, to the group or to me through the group. So I will, uh, the guide that you can give the testimony, I will share at first because truly Goliath fell and not on his back, but on his face. So on the Christmas season, I was guided by the Holy Spirit to go visit my parents many hundreds of kilometers away and we were visiting there with my dear wife and there uh, my wife's family is not a believer and they have never spoken about those subjects but that hasn't never heard of the, these people speaking much about this subject and i have shared the gospel show with them but now i was visiting there as they invited to me to visit just uh, for me i visited the place and was going to leave after the meal, but something kept me a little bit longer there. And then they started to have a bizarre discussion about some rituals in some cannibalist cultures or something like that. But in the end, they come to a point where the mother was speaking about life after. And at that point, I started to speak, tell them on one man's story here in Kuopio we have met who was raised from the dead after 30 minutes and then went to hell and came back by the grace of God. I told tell them about this testimony and then for the next hour or something like that, we were speaking about Jesus, we were speaking about salvation, we were speaking about scripture and things related to that. Even though they give, didn't give their lives at, to Jesus at that moment, it is impossible for that, them not to come to faith because of that, because the whole situation was so saturated with the Holy Spirit. There was this liberty, this peace, and even at the end, we hugged with, I hugged with each one of those three persons, Greta's little brother, his mother, and his father. And even at one point there, because they were saying that they had some direct connection without Jesus, Holy Spirit gave such boldness that I heard him say to me that pray for the little brother who is, has smiled color, color blindness, and I, Jesus, will heal him in that instant. There was such atmosphere of boldness, of Holy Spirit, even though the little brother didn't want 
to be prayed for. And next, this testament just doesn't end here. Do you see how, what Goliath, Goliath, and Jesus, our Lord, has ta taken down? What has been taken down? The timidity has died. The God places that gospel should not be preached or things that they are they are inappropriate to preach. Now the gospel was preached with boldness in atmosphere of liberty and of peace, and the people heard it gladly. As we, we said of Jesus, that sinners heard him gladly. So these three shall come to faith. And this testament just doesn't end. I went to my parents' house where my little brother, little sister was also visiting. They are confessing the Lord, but they are not in faith. They are living in sin. So, yes. So then I told, I said, at the, they had Enos, and I went there and said, hey, I, I have a toy story to tell. And I told this meeting I had just prior to coming today with Greta's family. I went to share the story, and then I pointed out to my little sister, little brother, saying, your way is going to hell, but Jesus has died for you. He has died that way. If you repent from your sins and leave them behind, turn to him with all your heart, you shall experience the life abundant. Even they said, I asked, are you willing to repent and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? They both said, in fact, no, you know, you know in different words. So I proclaimed, oh, because you have decided to serve the devil, but Jesus loves you. This little instant, little conversation caused that while I took the dog out, dog out just after this meeting, this discussion, I went back in after the show. Why I heard that some, not all, but some of my family members, or my biological family, wanted me to leave the house at Christmas Eve because of this testimony. Not because they hate me, but because they hated Jesus. So by the provision of God, we spent the night with my dear wife at hotel, and it was a wonderful night spending in the presence of God. But this is what the Lord has done to us. The boldness in the Lord, and in the fact, in the Christmas evening, the evening that is about Christ, well, it's in that evening, in that same evening, even though people might be celebrating it, just having Christmas present under the Christmas tree and focusing on those things. But Christ was preached to seven persons that evening with boldness that can, can that can only come from God. Goliath has truly been taken down. And this was my 54 to 57, verse 117. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem. But he put his armor in his tent. And when Saul saw David go for against the Philistine, he said unto Abne, the captain of the host, Abne, whose son is it you? And Abne said, as thy soul liveth, O king, I cannot help. And the king said, Engoi those, thou whose son the stripling is. And David, and as David returned from the sword of the Philistine, Abne took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. Is not the enemy sad even in his hand from the beginning, 54 to 57? He didn't leave his triumph after him. When he had fought the enemy and had overcome, he didn't say that this is part of history. By this victory, I am working still today. When I meet people, I walk from the standpoint of this victory. We walk from the standpoint of the victory God has given us, and we shall not let it go. We are not going to next day saying that um, I'm not a brother of Goliath is coming. Oh, should I join the? Should I join the Israel people who are fearing in the caves when he's roaring again, or should I go and take the second store I had in my back from the proof? We are going from that victory standpoint. Therefore, we are celebrating next year. There is not such Goliath that shall not fall down because this year Goliath fell. If there comes another liar, another bear, it they shall fall down. It's it's impossible, impossible for them not to go down. Let's read another scripture. We, we just focus on praising God. This is so good what God has done. Let's read another place. Meanwhile, Psalm 103 and let's read verses 1 to 7. Psalm 103. 1 to 7. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgive it all thy iniquities, who healed all thy diseases, who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, <laughs> who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. We have come to know God by his grace a little bit more this year. We have come to know what is to be filled with his spirit, be full of the spirit. For our poor brethren were filled in one week time. We have seen seeking him. We have seen demons being cast. We have seen people brought from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the dear son. 
and we are about to see, we are on the edge, we are being prepared, we are being strengthened and matured, made perfect, so that we can carry the weight of revival, that he all will come in masses, in multitudes, to meet the Lord our God, our Savior. And therefore, we are praising our Lord, our God. How f- mild we need to, and this is the thing, this is saying, oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Maybe you need to stir your soul a little bit to bless the Lord. Like, like, what about putting a little dance on your feet and may say, say to it, now, now it's time to dance, now it's time to praise the Lord. If Maybe you need a little arousing to some of your part, maybe to sing in the Spirit of the Lord. No, you know, last time when those two sisters be, was, were filled with the Spirit, we needed to instruct them that you will it, you will it to speak. God doesn't make you dance. God doesn't put your put the spirit of dance on your leg and it will just go around or, or spirit of song in your and it will just go around. You choose to bless the Lord. You choose to dance before the Lord. You choose to sing in the spirit for the Lord because you are so glad. You are so full of joy. You are so full of thanksgiving. It's your choice. Your choice and my choice is that we have accepted the salvation that is in the one and only name of Jesus. But it's your choice also to give him thanks. So now, let's give him th- the thanks that is due to his name. Let's continue. We have been praising God. I have been dancing. We have now been here for 47 minutes. So I have been dancing about 40 minutes this far. So let's continue to praise the Lord for the victories he has given us and the even more wonderful year that is coming. Oh, Father, thank you for this year that we have almost concluded. It has be- begun by your grace and it is ending with even abundance more of your grace. Father, thank you for this year. Thank you. We have gone through dark valleys. We have gone through tribulations and afflictions, but we have gone through them by your grace, by your spirit, and we are strong now. Can we say to you that we are more than conquerors? Indeed, we can say we are. We have gone through with more things that we went in with. Lord, thank you. It's by your spirit. It's by your grace. It's not our achievement. It's not by our power. It's not by our mind. It's by your spirit, oh Lord. Thank you what you have done. You are so good, Father. And 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 we have seen your power being manifested. We have been life being changed, even in couple amongst all dances, being filled with the Spirit, proclaiming with authority the word of God and testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> what you cannot do, there's nothing you cannot do, our oh Lord, our oh God. Thank you for this amazing deeds you have done. And and we have seen new people coming to faith. We have seen them being turned from darkness to light. Thank you, Father. This is so good. And it's also funny that we have faced so such funny persecutions this year, being proclaimed to uh, practice up African witchcraft. Well, it, uh, Jesus was persecuted, so thank you, Father. Uh, by the way, as you said, our Lord Jesus Christ, that, that, that when you are persecuted, rejoice, be exceedingly glad. So thank you, Father, for those persecutions. We are making couple dance movements for you, making couple songs for you, making couple melodies from you, Mona chapter. Thank you for those persecutions, those afflictions, for those. Thank you for those weaknesses. Thank you for you, for those infirmities when we are weak. Weak. when we are weak, whether that's for persecution, for affliction, because when we are weak, we have strong, you have done so good things, our Lord. Thank you even that, uh, that, that education on our workplaces, that you have given us wisdom, you have given us given us profit, you have given us funds, you have given us such such, uh, such intelligence and wisdom, the two things that can't only be done by your spirit. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this. It's so good to fellowship with you. We will rather die than leave you. We will rather go to pray right than to leave you. You are so good, God, Father. Thank you for these things. It's so good to be with you. It's so good to live with you. It's so blessed to be with you, spend time with you. Thank you for these things, my Abba. Thank you. Thank you, our oh, Father. That's just my Father, but our oh, Father. Thank you, our Father. You 
you are so good, Father. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your abundance. Thank you for, thank you for the relationship we are living in. You have blessed so, so abundant, exceeding abundantly that we could have never asked so sweet blessings. Thank you for my marriage. It's, I cannot say that. Can marriage be this good? Is it, is it heaven already? Or what is happening? Or it is our God and presence of His Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Yeah, then so good things have we are blessed upon, upon abundance, above abundance. Thank you, Father, for your blessings. We are giving you thanks. Receive all the glory and praise and the Thank you, Father. Thank you that the Goliath has been taken up. Thank you for the preaching of the gospel with, with boldness. But we, are, we were bold in the Lord. We were bold in the Lord as we learned last Saturday, as you spoke to us. Thank you that gospel was free with such boldness that even when people were saying that you would be cast out, not even though not, the, not eternity or not like eternity, not be able to visit anymore again, but still for cast out because we were proclaiming the gospel. We still stood because the boldness was from you. Thank you. We rather obey God than obey man. That can be said only by the Spirit of God. Thank you. Father, you did it. We give you all the glory and praise to you. Thank you for the testimony. Thank you for the restoration of backsliders. Thank you for the work that we have been doing. Because all my deep priest, that, that the saints will be edified. That, that we will see the might all falling of the Spirit. We have been preaching the gospel. We have been praying. We have been proclaiming the word. We have been teaching and preaching the word. And, and we shall experience you also the great revival, great awakening. The people will turn to God, the Lord again. Again to God, the Lord God of heaven. They shall come to know the abundance, mercy of the Lord. When shall they see? They shall see the daily mercy. They repent from the wickedness. Because the presence of God is so mighty among us. The glory of the God of God shall be seen upon. Thank you, Lord, for these things. We are praising you. We are not focusing on, on money or fame or, or status or influence. We don't care about those things. We care about you, our Lord. Our heart is pumping for you. Our heart is full of focus on seeking more of you, our Lord. We love you, our Lord. Thank you. Thank you. You are so good, Father. We give you glory and praise. Oh, thank you, Father, for your grace. Thank you, Father, for your good. Oh, you are so good. We give you praise and adoration. We give you praise, Father. You are praise worthy. You are thanks worthy. You are worship worthy. You are blessed worthy. You, you deserve power, glory, and adoration. Thanks to you, praise and bless you. Thank you for what you have done for us. Thank you that you are dwelling with us. Thank you that this time you time so spent with you is such a blessed time. Oh never God. alone. We, we can never feel alone because you are so good. good. You are so good. We can never have a more moment of, so of, of alone, not being so alone or feeling loneliness. Because our Lord is all away. It's so full. It's so Bless full of peace and joy that is in the Holy Ghost. You are so awesome. We are family. Thank you, Father, for the increasing love you have poured upon us. That we are so happy in each other. We are thinking the best of each other. We are thinking of no evil. We are thinking the best. And we are thinking others above even ourselves. We are esteeming others better than us. We are forgiving you for the love that you have given. Thank you for the hard feel and hard like punishable love. It's so deep amongst us when even we can even touch almost touch it. Thank you for that love because why do we know everyone shall know that we are your disciples? They are your disciples of your son Jesus Christ. Thank you, 
the Father from the He's going to be only the Spirit of God amongst us. Oh, Holy Spirit, you deserve a great thanks. You have done so much among us. You have filled us all. We are full of the Spirit. The evidence to speak in tongues, and not just in past experience, but every day of overflowing with tongues. Awesome. Holy Spirit, it was your proof that the stone was taken from you. It was your stone you had molded for a time. And it was your guidance, your strength, the muscles, your strength in the arms. The stone was slain and Goliath was taken down in one strike. One strike. It was your ability, our Lord. Thank you, Holy you are so good. so good. Holy Spirit, you have done so amazing. You are Amen. Oh, the same you power so you, good. you, 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 you are so feel, good. feel the people, our brethren, we speak of course, same power is regarded to get raised to dead. Holy Spirit, we are you just are spending so time of fellowship you with so you. Yeah, even more next Paul year, because God. we love your presence. We love when you dwell with us. We love when you are meet us. We love when we are Because it's so blessed. It is so good to spend time with you, Lord. Spirit. Thank you for this abundance of your blessings. Thank you for this great of your blessing or your presence. And Holy Spirit, thank you that we can we, we don't want to do anything of our own. We always want to hear your sweet voice. Your small voice, your voice that small sweet voice. That we are waiting to hear. We are so delighted. We adore that voice. We are so preferring the voice over the voice of the world. We don't love the words or the things. Not lust, the lust of, of the flesh, or lust of the eyes, or the pride of life. But we love this. We love this. We love this. We love this. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you that you are so perfectly guiding us. Thank you that you are teaching us to all, guiding us to all, and teaching us to all. We have made our remembers all the color of Jesus Christ has spoken to us. Holy Spirit, thank you that you are so greatly glorified. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are so greatly glorified Jesus Christ, our Lord. That is the deepest desire of our heart, to please our Lord, to love our Lord, to glorify our Lord Jesus Christ. And Holy Spirit, thank you that you are doing that to us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are doing that to us. Glorify our Lord Jesus Christ. We couldn't do that out of my own at all. But thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are doing that to us. Glorify our Lord Jesus Christ. So Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you adoration. You bless us. Oh, the Lord, always belongs to all of Israel. All the redeemed, Father. We give you all that is yours. For you be deserved the glory and praise and adoration. Power and glory. What shall we say unto this God? You are so. Thank you for your power that has changed our lives. Thank you for your power that is Thank you for your spirit that God is touching lies around us and changing them. Thank you for the first love that is God. A burden for God. You are worthy to sit on the throne. You are worthy, O Lord. You are worthy to sit on the throne. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God, of all these things you have done, we are not just content with it. We want more. We want more. We want more. We are hungry for more. We are fighting for God. We are fighting for you, God. We are fighting for you, God. Thank you, God. And we are hungry. We are hungry for more. To spend more time. To pray more. To pray more. Lord, you want Papa, more. you are want wanted more. to sit on you, the throne. You want to know you, you are want wanted to come close to you. Hey, want you are wanted to, to sit on the throne. More, more, more and more and more. You are wanted, oh Lord. Praise and glory to your name, Father. You are so much. You deserve all these things. Father, turn of grace and glory, adoration to you, for you are worthy, our Lord, our God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Mm. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, we have given some thanks and some praise. Amen. So the next next person will be Emmanuel, or dear brother. Emmanuel, will you be ready to lead us in the next? The glory of God. I want to thank God for how God has helped me uh, throughout this year. God has been so faithful to me. God has been so kind. God has been so merciful to me. You know, a lot of things have happened personally to me this year. And I just want to give God all the glory because if it was not for the mercy of God... Uh, I don't know if I will be alive today, but I just thank God for this year. It has been so rough, very rough. You know, God has just proven himself in many ways. And a thousand tongues are not enough. You know, there was a time in this year, I, you know, I just told the Lord, I said, Lord, I said, Lord, is enough. You know, I told the Lord, I said, I was very, very bitter, very, very, I was very angry, you know, very, very unhappy. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I, I'm no longer interested. Whatever you, you have called me to do, whatever you have said, I will, you know, manifest on it. I, I'm no longer interested. I, I just want to go. You know? I'm just, you know, I, I believe it's not something I, I boast of. It's not something I'm proud to say, but, you know, somebody at times you get to such a point. I, I I really got to that point where I just look at you know the face of the Lord and I said, Lord, see, um, I don't I don't I don't know. You know I just said, Lord, is no, I, I I'm not interested anymore. You know, and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, please just let me go because I was I was very frustrated. A lot of things happened this year that you know spiked those things. You know, I looked at everything and it was very tough, very very tough. But I know that I, I cannot explain it to you in a way you can understand. But I, I it's my experience. So I just told the Lord, I said, Lord, see, probably if I sleep tonight, maybe I I, I don't even want to open my eyes in this world. You know, I was always telling the Lord that I'm not, I'm not interested anymore. You know? So one day my mother called me, said, come. I went home. So I said, I know, treated her and everything. And she, she said she had a dream. You know, and then she said she saw a coffin, saw a coffin. And then she went close to the coffin in that dream. And as she opened the coffin, she saw me lying in the coffin. But I was not dead. And then she was pleading with me. She said, come out, come out. She said, why are you doing this? Come out. And I said, I was reluctant. She said, she doesn't understand what it means. But I, I did understand what it means. Man. And I just was, just, I just told her to forget it that nothing can happen to me but i did understand that dream you know it was some of the things i was going through which i never told anyone you know i was deeply discouraged in the lord it was like when david told god he said god well, how long have you forsaken me how long will you you know let me be like this you know how long will you allow this happen to me you know? so i just told her forget about it you know i laughed it off and played it off but she was just worried and prayed with me you know and so i just you know went home and i i cheered up a little but i still i wasn't i wasn't feeling myself i was elijah was afraid of I don't believe Elijah was afraid of Jezebel. I just believe Elijah got to a point where he felt like he wasn't feeling it anymore. He wasn't he was laboring in vain or he was trusting God in vain or he was he wasn't seeing anything. He wasn't seeing the result of his effort. He wasn't seeing the glory of God or he wasn't seeing you know, so one time Pastor Andrew called me, you know, of recent that's from that is it last month or two months ago, you know. And then and the funniest thing is that as as this was happening, people will be calling me, you know. Some people called me and they will be in one challenge. I would pray for them, I would encourage them, I would you know share scriptures with them, I would encourage them. And after that, I would still go back to this situation. I would still feel unhappy and angry at the Lord. I don't know why. I still felt disappointed, you know. So uh Pastor Andrew called me sometime and then you know told me a similar thing like that my mother told me, similar thing. You know, God had revealed it to him and he prayed with me and he encouraged me, you know, and really prayed with me and said, gave, gave me some words. So to call the long story short, after after those prayers, after those words, the Lord began to, you know, bring me into some experiences and began to really, I just opened up to the Lord because I, I shut, before then I was closed. My spirit was closed. I wasn't cursing God or anything, but I was just closed somehow. But then my spirit opened up to the Lord again and, you know, God began to bring me into some experiences, deep experiences in the spirit that really, really, really me up. really God began to show me some things and you know and God told me that even if I said I was not going to do it again that he would not allow me that he would never let me he would never take me he would never let me have my way and I just thank God for God encouraging me greatly even physically God began to do certain things that really encouraged me and I now began to see that it was not it's more than it's more than ourselves it's more than what we go through it's more than the pains it's more than the difficulties you know we have to carry our cross and follow Christ no matter what we just have to carry our cross it's more than we looking at self. It's we carrying a cross, following the Lord at any cost, you know. It's we dying to ourselves. It's we not letting the enemy to have the final say over us because it's not, not going to be easy. But at the end of the day, our life shall be a testament to the glory of God. God really encouraged me and I thank God for bringing me out of that low air and all the praise, all the glory be to him because right now I lay my hands on the floor. I'm in a deep concentration and commitment to God and I know that it can only get better. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Mary for the lengthy testimony. I want us to just appreciate God, give him all the praise. Thank him so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. That Jesus conquered Satan. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, praise the Lord. That Jesus conquers it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Lord, I praise you. Glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Just thank you for Samuel. Just thank you, Samuel 17. And the same scriptures that have been used before. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 17, it says verse 51. I will read from verse 51 to verse 54. It says, And David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheep thereof and cut off the head and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was there, they fled. They fled. And the men of Israel and the men of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until thou come to the valley and to the gate of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Sharim, Sharim, even to Gath, and unto Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing the Philistines after the Philistines, and they spoiled their tents. And David took the head of the Philistines and brought it to Jerusalem. Okay. But he put his armor in his tent. And when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistines, he said unto to Abner, the captain of the host. Abner, whose son is this you? And Abner said, As thy soul liveth with him, I cannot help. And the king said, Inquire thou whose son the stripling is. And as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said to him, Whose son art thou, thou young man? And David answered, I am the son of thy servant Jesse, the Bethlehem. Let us turn to another script of Psalm 107, verse 15 to 16. Psalm 107, verse 15 to 16. Psalm 107, verse 15 to 16 says, Oh, that man, oh, that man will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of brass and caught the bars of iron. You see, the song goes like this. The song that goes like this. Said, oh, that man, we praise the Lord. Oh, that man, we praise the Lord. Oh, his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. To the children of men. He has broken the gate of and caught the bars of iron in sunders. He has broken the gate of brass. Caught the bars of iron in sunders. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord is exceedingly good. He said, Oh, that men will praise the Lord. Oh, that men will praise the Lord. We have so many things to praise the Lord for. So many, so many. You know, God is so good. God is so good. We, we cannot, if we begin to praise Him from now till generations to come, it's not enough. It's not enough. God is so good. You can't count all His manifold goodness. You cannot count all His manifold goodness. You cannot count all that God has done for you. The things you don't even see. Preservation alone. How many people are dying every day? People are falling sick. Go to the, go to the hospital now. You will see a lot of people under the oxygen. Just trying to survive. Trying to live. Paying for their life. You know, good health is underrated. Many of us have underrated good health. You know how much it costs. Oxygen costs. People are literally dying every minute. For God has given us life. Given us health. When David prevailed over the Philistine and cut off his head and slew the head of the Philistine. Oh, there was praises and rejoicing. 
You see, you don't need to see what God has done for you to praise him. That we've been alive today and having hope for tomorrow is enough for us to praise God. We've been alive today and in the center of his will is enough for us to praise him. So when I say we should begin to praise God, I, I don't want to begin to encourage anybody to praise God. I just want you to reflect. Just reflect. Think of, think of, see this verse, what the verse said. He said, oh, that man we praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works. He has broken the gate of brass. We have been praying. We have been praying. We have been dismantling the, the works of the lions. We have been slain lions in this year. And whether you believe it or not, God has been delivering us from so many things. Personally, God has been chiseling out a lot of things that are out of our life. A lot of bondages. A lot of, a lot, a lot of gates of brass have been broken. Shackles have been torn off from our lives. Addictions have been broken. This man too. Oh, all that has crept in on our ways in our life. God has removed them. God has given us the victory over them because of your, because of his manifold law. And now tonight, we want to praise God. So when I say praise God, I'm not encouraging you. I would just want us to open our mouth when I say let us start. I want us to just, we just open our mouth and begin to praise him. In, in, in Isaiah 45 verse 1, before we begin. In Isaiah 45 verse 1, and then 1 and two, what did the Bible says in Isaiah 45? In verse 1 and in verse 2, he says, Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have hold, to subdue nations before him, and I will lose the loins of kings, to open before him the two left leaf gate, and the gate shall not be shut. He said, I will go before thee, and I will make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass, and I will cut in sunder the bars of iron. You see what God said to, to, to this man? The same thing God has said to us at the beginning of this year, and which he has performed. God has broken the gates of brass. He has broken the shackles. Shackles of disappointment. Shackles of discouragement. Shackles of depression. Shackles of, of infirmities. Shackles of spiritual oppression. God has broken them. And now it's time for us to praise him. You will now look at God in his glory. You will now lift up your spirit man to God and say, Father, I fall at your feet. You are worthy of my praise. You are worthy of all that I have received today. Or in this year, you are worthy. So, brethren, mm -hmm. I want to say open your mouth and begin to praise him. Praise in the spirit. Man, praise him for your family. Praise him for your life. Come and see, oh, come and see. Come and see what the Lord has done. 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 Come and see. 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 What Jesus has done. Come and see. What the Lord has done. Yes, come and see what the Lord has done. Oh, come and see what the Lord has done. If you were to be mine, I will release you. The goodness of the Lord I have seen in the downfall of Satan, glory be to God, glory be to Jesus. I have seen the downfall of Satan, glory be to God, amen. I have seen, I have seen the downfall of Satan, oh, glory be to God, glory be to Jesus. I have seen, seen the downfall of Satan, glory be to God. Amen. When I look at my front, I see Satan has fallen. When I look at my back, I see Satan has fallen. When I look at my right, I see Satan has fallen. When I look at my left, I see Satan has fallen. I have seen, seen. 
the downfall of Satan. Be to God. Glory be to Jesus. I have seen, seen all the downfall of Satan. Glory be to God. Amen. I have seen, I have seen the victory of Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. We have seen, seen the conquest of Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. Yeah, mama, the kind moment. He see a new the kind of papa. All of the wicked one broken in my life. Lord, Rua <laughs> I'm grateful. I want to say this. I want us to really look at God. I want us to just look at God. Is God not faithful? Is he not faithful? Is he not, is he not worthy of our praise? Is he not worthy? Don't he deserve it? Don't he deserve it? It's not about our challenges. It's not about what God has not done. It's not about those things we have not achieved. It's not about those things at all. It's, can you pay for God's presence in your life? Can you pay for God's presence? Can you pay for the peace that you have right now? Can you pay for this peace that God has given you? You cannot pay for it. People are crying. People are wishing that they have what we have. I'm telling you. But when God began to open my eyes, people are wishing this thing you have, this, this Holy Spirit, this Holy Spirit you have. There was a man in scriptures. He brought money to Peter. He said, give me this same gift. There's something you have I need that will trivialize. Treasure in earth investment. There's something that we have that we need to see that God has done for us. We have this treasure in earth investment. Oh, that the excellency and the glory might be unto God. This treasure, God is so faithful. And that's what God said in that Isaiah 45. He said, I've gone before you and opened the two leather gates. He said, they shall not be shut. He said, I, I will break in pieces the bars of iron. He said, they will break in pieces. And let me tell you something that you don't understand. That by virtue of our prayers in this year alone, there are several bars. There are several, there are several bars and, and spiritual shackles that God has broken that we have not realized. There are several limitations that God has broken as a result of these prayers, this, this combat in this year that we have not really realized. When next year begins to become so smooth for us, we will then realize that, ah, indeed, we were not praying in vain. We will then realize that, ah, indeed, God did something. <laughs> when those doors begin to, physically, those doors begin to open, we will then realize that, ah, truly, God has been faithful and God deserves all the praise. So, for one or two minutes, I want us to tell Lord, the Lord, say, Father, I thank you because of the shackles that you have broken in my life. As a result of this, of this, this combat, these prayers in this year, I thank you. Brethren, open your mouth and say thank you for the shock. Thank you. 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 I can't run here, 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 I can't run
Hüre, Hanım Hüre, Dedon Açoron Hinden Değil. Hanım Hüre, 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 I just want to say, yes, I just want to say, yes, I just want to say, yes, I just want to say, So let's read for Samuel 17 and let's read from verse 54. We are going to read to verse 57. I want a few of us to participate. Maybe I call um, Roya. He took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem. But he put his armor in his hand. And when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said unto Abner, the captain of the host, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As thy soul liveth, O king, I cannot tell. And the king said, Inquire thou whose son the stripling is. And verse 57. And as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. Thank you very much. This is how we are going to end this year. Mm. We are going to end this year carrying on our hands the souvenir of the death of Goliath. And that is how we are going to enter into the new year. And now look at something. Let's go back to verse 54. And David took the head of the Philistine. It was a decision. It was a decision. <laughs> Holy Ghost, help us tonight. Remember, the last time David took something, it was by the brook. He took stone. Is that not true? <laughs> Holy Ghost, help us. Verse 40. He said, and David took his staff in his hands and he chose him five smooth stones the last time david took something he took it by the river brook by the holy ghost by the waters of life and now the next time david needs to take something it was the head of goliath he had taken i tell you the truth by the spirit of god that if you continue to swim in the river of the holy ghost you will take the head of your enemy watch that and if you want to continue to hold the enemy's head in 2024 you must have an incurable fellowship with the Holy Ghost. You must. Because I can guarantee you that as long as you are swimming in the water of the living God, the Holy Ghost himself, there is the head of the enemy that you will, you will always take. <laughs> and well, I hope everybody here is baptized in the Holy Spirit because it can happen again. I told you at the beginning, I do not know what is going to happen tonight. Let's just follow the river. <laughs> The Bible says, and David took the head of the Philistine. He made a choice to take it. 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 Why? Because David recognized there is something that needs to be displayed for a generation to see that God walks in the affairs and rules in the affairs of men. The Bible says, and he brought that head to Jerusalem. When he was leaving Jerusalem, when Jesus sent him to the battlefield, what was in his hand, he had a plate of food 
and victuals he wanted to give his elder brothers who had been at the battlefield for 40 days. But something changed. What David's father, Jesse, gave to him to present to his brothers was abandoned by David. So what the physical father gave to him was food and victuals for the battlefield. When David got to the battlefield, he considered what his father gave to him as useless because there was a threat to the territory of Israel, to the sovereignty of the, of the entire kingdom. And they were about to become a slave to the Philistines. What use is the food the father has given to him? He dropped it on the floor. His brother Seth were not even interested because they were busy harassed by, by Goliath. They've lost appetite. They only know their navigations in between the darkness of the caves. And so, of what use is the food brought from Jerusalem to the battlefield? David felt like this is a wrong load to carry at this time. He dropped it on the floor. Nobody was interested because there was a lion roaring, a Goliath of God. <laughs> so when David dropped the food on the floor, he recognized, my hands cannot be empty because I need to stand up to this challenge. So what happened? He went to replace what was in his hands with the stones of the river blue. <laughs> so that was a replacement for the task that was ahead of him. And so he replaced the food of his father with the stones of the Holy Ghost. And that stone, we know the story, brought Goliath down. Now, you know he cannot carry the stones to Jerusalem because those stones were for warfare. <laughs> Jerusalem, there was no war in Jerusalem. Everybody was at peace. There was nobody to catapult down in Jerusalem, right? <laughs> but he needed to go to Jerusalem with something. And the young man looked at everything around him. He cannot carry back the food the father gave to him. It would have been stale because it has taken a few hours. He can't take stones to Jerusalem. It's not relevant for Jerusalem. But there was something relevant for Jerusalem. <laughs> and that was the head of Goliath. And look at it. Look at the transition. I tell you by the Spirit of God, this coming year, not Saka you also will carry with you to your Jerusalem the head of Goliath. That's what the Holy Ghost is saying. <laughs> From January to December 2024, you will carry with you the emblem, the souvenir of the victory that God has wrought through your life. And so David took the head of the Philistine unto Jerusalem. Look at something. And David took his armor also. David stripped Goliath of his weapons. David stripped Goliath of all of his and my man, David stripped Goliath of everything he depended upon. And David brought it into his tent, into his bedroom. He brought it into his bedroom that now this is my souvenir. You know, the enemy that pursued you in 2023. <laughs> Holy Ghost, help us. Emmanuel, listen. <laughs> that spirit of death <laughs> that pursued you. <laughs> In 2023, you will see their souvenir. You will seize their ammo. And you will lay them in your tent. So that you will know that the Holy Ghost actually came to intervene on your behalf. Emmanuel, that is for you. Marakasi Montakata. <laughs> and so David came to his tent and he spread on the floor. The garment, the ammo, the spear, the hem, the breastplate, the shoes, the sword of Goliath. <laughs> Which means anybody that comes comes to visit David, they will first look at what David had to show, his treasure. <laughs> They will first look at his monument and say, well, what is this? And David will begin to tell them about the conquest of the Almighty God. That can you imagine? That about key, the person that was wearing this garment, right? Isn't that a good story? When people come to visit you in the coming year, the souvenir of the victory of God in your life will be the discussion point. No more room for backbiting and gossiping. You will only be talking about the wonders of God. I give that to you. But I carry a soda. <laughs> In the coming year. Why? Because God has come to show himself on the behalf of his people. And the nations will be shaking one more time. Because we, our tent will be so filled with all of the armors of Goliath. And people will be looking, will be looking, and keep on looking. And say, wow, this testimony is so wondrous. This is so mighty. This is so great. How can God do this? How can God do this? How can God? And for, and for hours. Men and women will be singing praises to God when they see your life, when they see your emblem, when they see your house, when they see your rooms, when they see everywhere filled with awards, with honor, with glory, with invitation, with promotion, with excellence, with signs, with wonders. And they will say, yesterday he was a shepherd boy with only a staff. 
But today, he was his house is full of the glory of God. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Now, look at verse 55. We are going to praise God because all these things that God, the Holy Ghost is saying, they are going to come to pass. You don't need to do anything about it. It will come to pass. <laughs> Verse 55, and where Saul, Saul, Saul was just an observer. <laughs> because you know why? He, did, he didn't know the way to the brook. He didn't know the way to the river. He has lost contact with the Holy Ghost. And that's why if you don't want to be an observer in 2024, please, <laughs> please <laughs> gravitate to the river. <laughs> If you don't want to be an observer like in Saul, gravitate to the river. If you don't want to be someone who is just giving applause and clapping hands for people's testimony, if you want to be someone that people will clap for, then you must not be far away from the brook. You must not be far away from the Holy Ghost. Always build up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Always tear the river in your belly, out of your belly, shall what rivers of living water. Never be far away from there. Otherwise, you will become an observer. God God for me. <laughs> And when Saul saw David go forth unto the Philistine, no Saul began to ask questions. Whose son is this youth? Let me tell you something. Holy Ghost help me. Matakaria huskata papa kata makuda. It's a result of the wonders and signs that God is going to do in your life in 2024. Kings and princes of this earth, they will begin to ask, ask, ask. Whose son are you? Whose daughter are you? Where did you come from? It will not be about your skin color anymore. It will not be about how much grammar you have in your mouth. It will not be about how much money you have in your bank account. No! When the glory of God sits upon you, kings and princes of this earth will begin to look for you. They begin to ask questions. Who song are you? Information will be spreading about you. Yeah, far away. <laughs> Many of us have got a glimpse of this thing. It's going to happen because 2024 is a year of the blast of God's trumpet. Watch it. <laughs> because the heavens have been opened and Jesus Christ is descending to glorify his name. He's coming for a glorious church. He's not coming for a church that is weak. He's not coming for a church that is paralyzed. He's not coming for a church that is anemic. He's not coming for a church that is bedridden. He's not coming for a church that is full of reproach. He's not coming for a church that is ostracized. It's not coming for a church that is hypnotized. It's not coming for a church that is ashamed of itself. It's coming for a glorious church. To that intent, Jesus has come to blow the trumpet of the saints of Zion and to proclaim them that righteousness and integrity exalt a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. Are you there? <laughs> it is better for you to key into the reality that God has given here for 2024. You will see it with your eyes. If you choose not to be an observer by always logging in into the river of the living water. <laughs> and so, Saul asks, whose son is this youth? <laughs> they will ask about you. You will get strange emails, strange phone calls. You will get strange connections. And you'll be wondering, but I have been here all these years. Ah, nobody remember me. That's why you think you are discouraged. That's why you think you are frustrated. That's why every time Dick and Ari appears just to be dumping garbage around your feet. Because they feel like, well, you are good for nothing. Don't worry. 2024 is a matter. <laughs> of the beam of glory upon your life. It will not be a year of struggle. Look at all the discussion between King Saul and General Commander Abner. David was not aware. They were having some very serious talk about this boy called David. He, David was not aware. I tell you, in the royal palaces, in the governor's offices, in the king's domain, <laughs> in the house of parliament, at the excellence of power, your name will be mentioned. <laughs> and it is not about your glory. It is about the glory of the king. Because he's coming for a glorious church. And God is going to raise you in every continent. And challenge the kingdom of darkness. That there is still a name that is above every name. And that name is Yeshua. Jesus, the son of God. Look at what happened. The Bible says, Abner was unaware of the identity of, the, of this royal champion called David. He said, I cannot tell. And then the king had to say for inquisition, he need inf more information about this boy. He said, Abner, you've got to go on a mileage. You've got to travel some distance. Go and inquire on my behalf. Who is this boy? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. As a result of the finger of God upon your life, as a result of the glory of God upon your life, some people will be sent on an assignment to inquire of the source of the glory that you carry.
January. Watch this. That's why you must not give any attempt to Satan to discourage you. January to December. Because it's going to be a year of full blast of the wonders of God. Our mouth will be so filled with testimony. Do you know? Because of David, Abner's assignment as a general commander, commanding officer of the, of the armies of Israel was reduced to a messenger. He began to look for information about this David. <laughs> he became an information specialist. <laughs> and he began to go up and down. Who is this boy? Hey, please help me. The king needs the information. On your behalf, God will send my team to become information specialist. On Takoria Pasine Tempa Kontanimatai. Holy Ghost, do as thou hast said. You, you were the one last year, two years ago, writing emails and say, oh, can you recognize me? Making phone call. I am still here. Please don't forget me. Don't worry. Hey, the king of the earth will send their right hand men and women to gather information about you that your father that has been eating from time immemorial <laughs> and does appear to have settled upon it. And it looks as if it is moribund. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The angel of the Lord we clean up the doors and your file will come out of that hidden places and it will be placed before the kings of the earth and they will say what shall we do what shall be done to the man to the man to the woman who dwell by the riverside that is going to be you and the bible says in verse 57 when david was returning from the slaughter <laughs> Which means they've not yet gotten the information they were looking for. The identity of who David is. They were still looking. All the time they were seeking for the information. David was busy prosecuting judgment over Philistine. <laughs> They were still waiting for the information about the whereabouts, the identity of David, his social security number. They want to trace him, his lineage, his ancestors. They were looking for that information. Well, it was about time they got it. And as David was returning from the slaughter, I like that. I like that terminology. It was a slaughter. It was a slaughter. David took Goliath into the abattoir and taught him how to die. <laughs> it was a slaughter. It was a slaughter. And the Bible says, and Abner took him. He took the boy. He didn't know where the boy came from, but the boy had souvenir in his hand. The Bible says he took the boy and took him and brought him before Saul. And David had still in his hand the head of the Philistine. He still had, only God knew how many hours David had. He held in his hand the head of Goliath. Only God knew how many hours. If it was 12 hours, David was holding it. I speak to you, then that will be the 12th month of 2024 for you. <laughs> you will hold the head of Goliath everywhere you go. You know one thing before we begin to worship God, because we are not we are not asking anything tonight, we are just thanking him. You know, as a result of the head of Goliath being in the hand of David, it qualified David to stand before the king. <laughs> This time around, not about he trying to introduce himself and trying to convince the king, I can fight, I can fight, I can fight Goliath. And the king say, no, you are too young. You can't try it. Take my armor. And you know, those kind of cock and bull story. Now, David came before the king with an evidence. So the king does not need to start asking question. Can you fight Goliath? When the head of Goliath is in your hand, that question is a foolish question. You know, you understand? <laughs> the Holy Ghost will not only bring you before the king's of the earth physically, spiritually, materially, and maritally. <laughs> but the Holy Ghost will provide answers in your hands that they don't even need to talk to you. And when they see, when they see your hands, when they see, when they see what is on your hands, what is in your hands, when they see, they know you are qualified to stand right beside me. <laughs> now begin to lift up your voice and just worship God. The Holy Ghost is done. Thank you, Father. Unmute yourself and just praise God. <laughs> It is done. Just give me the Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Give him prayer. Give him prayer. Worship. You are not here by accident. Worship. It is a year 
of it has been planned. Men will look for you, friends. Men will look for you. Do we get calls from every continent of this globe? People will come to your wilderness because they want to hear about the wisdom of God in your life. Do we bring many sons to glory? Men will come and look at you when the souvenir of revival is upon your hands. And through you, many have been turned to righteousness. They will come and look for you. We have been praying for revival in Europe. And people are saying, we have done everything possible. But you just came out of nowhere. And this is revival in your life. And you will tell them, it is not me, it is Jesus. <laughs> God has spoken, he will bring it to pass. What a let it is. Why are you crying? Wipe away your tears. In 2024, you will step. You will step. You will step into possibility. There's going to be a blast of it. And the Holy Ghost himself will demonstrate to us one more time that we have returned from slaughter. 2023 was a year of battle. But I tell you, a new beginning of joy and celebration is coming ahead of time. <laughs> and we shall have testimonies in our body. The tent, the tent, our tent and our room will be filled with the souvenir of the slaughter of Goliath. Goliath has already died. We are now taking time to pack his armor. <laughs> Praise God! Praise God! Praise God! Oh, let the earth rejoice. Let the saints of God rejoice. For you will know that God has called us by his name. <laughs> rejoice and praise him. And say, Lord, I know your word will surely come to pass. <laughs> you cannot lie. You cannot lie. You are bad and faithful. He will give unto us the treasures of darkness. <laughs> Yes, and any the riches of secret places shall be delivered unto us. <laughs> Both spiritually, physically, materially, financially, in all our ramifications. And the Holy Ghost himself. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Just praise him. Just praise him. Just praise him. Because celebration has begun. People will continue to come around and look at the souvenir. Our rooms, our houses, our life will be filled with testimony that we take men hours upon hours to have a walk in that reality walk in that reality remember it was only David holding the head of Goliath you will hold your own <laughs> Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Ita pepe penka hore akaske. Iva lito ramos ketami no kata bi kamina sasa pata tafa. Entara si le tenka ruka kasento faye. Yeta rima teka zoka lima katunga kapa ika kete ne bari huska. Eti valente reska ahere kante kamanga tani vakai. No enemy will be able to stand before you in the coming year. Brother, you will be carrying about with you the souvenir of your victory. <laughs> No matter kate na farika se le pate na ka. Rather than people seeing you in the coffee, they will see your enemies in the coffee. <laughs> Glory be to God. 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 Hallelujah. 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 He has wrought the victory. His hands have wrought the victory. His hands have wrought the victory. His hands 
have wrought the victory. His hands has wrought the victory. Little wonder. David said, he did yet my hands to war, so that the bow of steel is broken by my arms. You saw the evidence. Goliath's head was on his hands, in his hands for, for hours. <laughs> A demonstration of the finger of God. Upon Amen. Lord, we give you all the glory. Lord, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, we are praying. So, dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for an opportunity for brethren to come together in one body, one union. Oh Lord, to give you thanks, oh Lord, all throughout January, all the way down to this very day. Lord, dear God, we want to appreciate you. We want to thank you for all that you have done. We want to thank you, oh Lord, dear God, for the fact that we were able to go through fire and we never got burnt. We want to thank you, Lord, dear God, because we were able to go through that turbulence and we were never uh, drowning that deep water. I want to thank you because you have been with us from the very start, even up to this very moment. Lord, you've got to ask the solid rock and not a sinking sand. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for the victory that you have in our lives from January even on to this very moment. Dear Lord, we worship, we adore you. I want to thank you for this same battles and the same battles that we have been victorious in through the blood of the Lamb Jesus Christ and by the words of our testimony. Dear Lord, we worship you and we adore you. Thank you, dear Lord, because you're the God that knows the end even right from the beginning. Thank you, O Lord, dear God, for making us a sign even unto the people of the earth, for making your light shine in us that men are drawn to us. O Lord, dear God, we worship you and adore you. Glory to your name, Father. We give you thanks. We give you glory. We give you all the adoration. Let your name alone be highly exalted for in 2024, we're moving in in grand style. In the name of the Lord Jesus, just like David took the head of the Philistine, oh Lord, you God, and brought it onto Saul. Lord, you God, we have something in our hand. We have a past, oh Lord, that has qualified us, oh Lord, to stand before him and not before me and me. Glory to your name, Father, for this which you have done in our life. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you so much. We bless you because of all that you have done for us. In this 2023, we thank you because of how you have started with us. You started from January, Lord, and you began to teach us. We began, you began to teach our hands to war. You began to help us understand that we are combating lions. And you helped us de demolish and dismantle the lions ravaging our lives and ravaging our callings. Lord, we thank you because of all that you have manifested to us in this year. Lord, we say we don't take it for granted. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Thank you for this family. Thank you for the unity in our midst. Thank you for the brethren. Thank you for those who you have used for us in this year. Thank you for those who you have helped, Lord. Thank you for those who you have used to shape on us, who you have used to send words to us. Father, thank you for the ministers. Thank you for all that you have done for us. Father, we give you all the glory. We know that in this coming year, that God will shall shine forth as light. We shall manifest your glory. Lord, in this coming year, God, our victory, O God, shall be known in all the world. In the name of Jesus, we thank you because our calling is sure. We thank you because in this coming year, God, we shall show forth your glory in our lives. We give you all the praise, O God. And we pray, God, that as we continue, as we have started in the spirit, we shall continue in the spirit and we shall not end in the flesh. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you truly for, for the victory over Goliath. And thank you that we even have shown here with us the head of Goliath. And thank you for the, those words that you spoke to us. Thank you, Father, because we will stay by the crook. The crook brought us victory. So we know the place we always return, always be with, is the crook, the presence of the Holy Spirit. David couldn't have taken Goliath down without those stones, without visiting or being at the crook. So we cannot take Goliath down. Neither could we this yeah, last this year we was in or are in yet. Or Neither can we in the coming year if we don't stay with the Holy Spirit, with the proof. So we decide to stay with the Spirit of God, the Spirit that is able to subdue all powers under our feet. Dear Holy Spirit, thank you for this year that is soon going to end. We thank you, Father, all the glory be your wonderful name. And next year, many souls to your kingdom, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.